um, it, and we have a weekly session as well with from Ramadan reflections with Jibril Alao from six to seven. So you know we hope we're hoping that we would also carry this audience over to over to that um, to that session as well. So without too much ado, um, I honestly want to thank everybody, and I'm so grateful to have um, Mrs. Tony Kikir Echo to you know on on to give to grace us the time to honestly um give us a prime amount like that. Um, I can't imagine anybody better, <laughs> to be honest, to be able to deliver this uh, talk to us. So without too much ado, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Toy Kikere Ekron. She is the CEO of Lotus Capital Services, or Lotus Financial Services. Um, so without further ado, thank you so much, Ma. And we're happy to hear what you have to say. And we'll be listening very intently. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And uh, Ramadan Mubarak to everyone. I'd like to thank Tahara Collective for inviting me here today. It's indeed um, uh, an honor and a pleasure to discuss Zakat, um, what I'll call the most undiscussed pillar of Islam. Okay, so I'd like to share my screen if that's okay. Can you see my screen, please? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. OK, thank you very much. All right, then. Let's move this out of the way. OK, so zakat is the third pillar of Islam, like I said. But a lot of us don't know about it. I mean, by the time we get to secondary school, we all know about Salat. You know, I mean, we all know Fatia by the time we're 12. We may not have been praying at the time, but we do know about Fatia. We know about Salat. And then there's fasting. I mean, from the time we were young, we wake up for sorry, you know, and then we'll also eat breakfast. <laughs> So, you know, when our parents are just trying to introduce us to fasting and then, you know, fasting two o'clock and then before you now finally start fasting. So we knew about that. And then there was Hajj. You know, we knew about Hajj. At least one relative or the other had gone for Hajj. And the Mokka, all that. We see people, our aunties going for Hajj. So we knew about it. But, you know, zero silence when it comes to Zakat. I didn't know about Zakat. I knew, I, I mean, in secondary school, you know, it's a pillar of Islam. But actually knowing about it and people actually practicing it, I didn't know until I was an adult, really. So I'll, um, I would like to thank Tahara Collective again for shedding some light on Zakat. And I hope we break the cycle of, you know, people learning about Zakat when they're long overdue, you know, to make payments and, and things like that. So let's go along. So what does Zakat really mean? You know, it's obligatory charity, it's obligatory like Salat is obligatory, you know, fasting is obligatory, Zakat is also obligatory, and it means to increase, you know. I have a friend, and I always quote her every time, she says, charity does not reduce wealth, and it's just the truth. No matter how much you give, your wealth will not increase, and, that, and why? That's because you'll be receiving blessings on it. And then, Zakat also means to purify. How does it purify? I mean, because, I mean, in our daily lives, when you're hustling, you know, you, you don't know who you got insulted on the phone just because, you know, you, a business deal was going on or which salat you are delayed, you know. So the way we make our wealth, um, salat and zakat helps us to purify it along the way. Uh, let's look at some parts in the Quran. So Quran chapter 9 verse 103 says, O prophet, of their properties take an obligatory charity so that you may purify and sanctify them therewith and pray for them. Rarely your prayer is a source of security for them. So let's look at another part. Quran chapter 3, verse 180 says, and let those, let me see if I can move this. Okay. And let those who covetously withhold of that which Allah has bestowed on them of his bounty, that's wealth, think it is good for them, and so they do not pay the obligatory zakat. Nay, it will be worse for them. The things they covetously withheld shall be tied to their necks like a collar on the day of resurrection. So we seek refuge from this. So what are the benefits of zakat? To the giver, zakat encourages generosity, empathy, and goodwill. 
you know. Um, it's interesting to see that zakat had to be made obligatory, right? To think that there was once a time where people were not really interested in you know, giving charity, that it had to be made obligatory, you know? So it, it encourages generosity and empathy. It discourages hoarding. So you can imagine you put your money maybe under your mattress for a whole year and zakat is now charged on it, which means that a certain percentage of that wealth is given out to charity. So it reduces. So why don't you invest it or do something with it, an economic activity, so it increases and then you can pay your zakat and your capital is still there. You know, so it encourages investment and growth. And then it purifies, like I mentioned earlier, zakat cleanses the soul. So your nafs, you know, becomes uh, closer to Allah because you are giving what as he wants you to give. And Allah has said, you know, if you give, um, I will increase you, you know, and you know, there's a part in the Quran that says, you know, when you give, it's like a corn who has seven years, each year has a hundred hundred years, and, and it goes on and on like that, you know, and it protects us from greed. Zakat also brings blessings to your wealth, like I mentioned earlier. And then what's the benefit to the society? Zakat facilitates the distribution of wealth. If it's done properly, Zakat does uh, do that, and it reduces the gap between the rich and the poor. So in our society, at least in our own Uma, um, we're hoping to reach a time where um, zakat will be more efficient in distribution. First of all, even collections and distribution. So, because there are some societies that you won't believe that there are some people who don't even, who, some places where some people don't even qualify for uh, zakat. And you're like, really? Can, is that really possible? That's because their economies are so advanced in uh, zakat collections that some people don't even, some societies don't even have people that qualify. You know, so it's, it's uh, the end result is to reduce poverty. You know, and you have a vibrant society. And why is that? Because if you help the needy, they will be less likely to commit social ills. You know, so I don't mean social ills based on greed. I mean social ills based on desperation. You know, so you're desperate. What do you do when you're desperate? So it reduces all of that. Okay, so who are those that can receive that tax, right? So you have the needy and you have the poor. So you have two classes of people. Here you have some that don't have anything. They're destitute. They beg. And you have another class who they do have, you know, they do have some assets, they do have some income, but that income is not enough to take care of their needs. Maybe it just takes care of half of their needs or three quarters of their needs. So they're still, but they are they are calm about it. You don't see it on their faces, but you will know that you know people are struggling and all of that. So they qualify, you know, for zakat. And then you have six other categories that are all these eight categories are specifically mentioned in the Quran, in uh, nine, uh, Quran nine, chapter nine rather. And you have so those employed to collect the funds. So of course you have people managing zakat, uh, which could run into you know millions, billions. But depending on the ummah you're in, you have to pay them out of it. You know, and then of course to attract the hearts of those who have been inclined. So this could mean several things. There's some people that maybe are you know, watching to see, oh, can I convert? And if they're destitute, even though they're not Muslims yet, we can, we can help them out. And, you know, I also read that the Prophet Sallallahu paid zakat to people who he felt will have been, um, will have been vicious towards the Muslims, you know, so they paid them some of zakat to calm them down and uh, the Muslims were fine. And then, of course, those in debt with hardship, they pay, you can give them zakat. And then, Free the captives. We don't really have that anymore. People in captivity or bondages or, or bondage or slaves. <clears throat> and then for Allah's cause and the wayfarer and the stranded traveler. So this six, right? We are not really experts on how to compute this. You leave that to the um, official distributors of uh, zakat. However, to the needy and the poor, you can easily identify those around you, and you can actually give out. Or if you cannot, then you give it to. Uh, an organization that can help distribute and you must be sure that that is actually being done right but we'll go further into you know how you can even do it yourself i mean possible so a lot of people usually ask that what's the difference between zakat and saraka anyway i mean i give saraka so what's the big deal if i don't give zakat or something uh but think of it this way what if you used to play pray nawafil that's nufflers so in a day you can do 20 nufflers but you don't pray your five obligatory prayers. If you think about that for a second, 
are you fine? Would you be fine? No. So even if you like pay 50 now I feels if you do not pay your five daily prayers, you owe, you owe it. You know, so it's the same thing with uh, zakat and sadaka. Zakat is obligatory, so you pay zakat, it's like a tax. But sadaka is voluntary, you give sadaka. You know, so that's one major difference. Another difference is that if, um, for zakat, there's a fixed minimum, you know, that qualifies to be zakatable. And there's a defined computation of zakat and a specified timing for payments. However, sadaka, you can give when you like, who you like, how you like. For, be uh, sorry, for beneficiaries and utilization are clearly defined, which I explained earlier. And beneficiaries for zakat uh, are the giver's discretion or are the fund manager's discretion, as the zakat and foundations and, and people who manage zakat. All right. So before we go into computation of zakat, let's first assess a few things. Is your income permissible? Is your income permissible? And that is because you cannot pay zakat on haram income. It's not acceptable. Um, so you have to assess your income. But is it halal? So ensure that you don't earn interest because interest, a riba, everybody knows what the riba is. Interest is number one. If, even if I don't know anything, we all know that interest is not permissible. So if you have um, income from interest, you can't pay zakat on it, really. You have to just dash it out at salary. You still owe you know, zakat. Then um, income from maybe uh, businesses that are not allowed, maybe you are in the winery uh, business or gambling. If you do Nara bit, whatever you earn from Nara bit, you cannot pay Zakat on it. Um, yeah, so, you know, different things. I remember a funny story years ago, years ago, I think it was my sister that was telling me that uh, I think she went to the market one day and there was a, 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 a one of the traders, right? There was a, a man who wanted to buy some liquor from her, you know, some alcohol. And so the guy told her, so please, can you pass the that bottle to me? She now said, ah, Moti shall allow more for that emophorine. What she meant was that I've done my ablution now, so go and pray. So take it by yourself. So what we now realized was that that she was obviously a Muslim, she prays, but she may not have understood that. In fact, she didn't understand that it was haram, but she was still selling it. And she said, oh, she don't have it, she can't touch it. So obviously there's a lot of, um, there's still a lot of um, education that has to go around. But the point I'm bringing out here is that even as good as she was, you know, as, 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 as devoted she tried to be, whatever income she had earned from the alcohol, she can't really pay, she can't pay Zakat from it, it's, it's, it's haram. So we just have to be careful on, you know, how we earn our living. Right, so let's move on to um, the categories of wealth that zakat is due on. So we have agricultural products that grains and fruits pro uh, produced by the earth. You have livestock, which is grazing or herding animals, which feed freely from the earth, like cows, sheep, goats, and camels. And you have gold and silver stored for wealth, not the ones you wear on a daily basis. And then you have business merchandise, stock uh, for businesses, land and building for resale, cars for sale. I mean, anything that is for sale, for trading, trade, trade, uh, trade stock and all that. And um, yeah, so they're um, zakatable. And then of course, the ones we know about, which my uh, presentation is going to focus on, I, I'm not going to discuss agricultural products and livestock or anything like that. We'll be talking about cash and savings and investments, rental income, profits, shares and securities and bonds, which we are familiar with. And, and all of that. All right, so the computation of zakat, there's what you call the nisab, which I'll explain in the next slide. You have the nisab, the timing, which I explained earlier when I was uh, discussing the difference between zakat and sadaka, and then the computation of zakat. So what is nisab? And everybody is nisab, nisab. So nisab actually means is the minimum wealth, right, that a Muslim must have you know, before qualifying to pay zakat. So because, before the obligation becomes due, you have to have reached a minimum threshold, right? So that's zakat, uh, to be zakatable. So the Professor Salab described it, what, from what he described, right? Uh, that would be 87.4 grams of silver. Some people say 85 grams um, of, sorry, of gold. It's 7.48 grams of gold. And some, and, and another uh, threshold is 612 uh, 0.36 grams of silver. 
And then the question now is, so when do you pay Zakat? Well, you pay Zakat after one year. So you pay Zakat when that wealth has been with you after one year. However, for crops, is paid upon harvest. So like I said, I'm not going into crops, that was just for some info. Then how do you compute Zakat? There are different classes of assets with different classes of rates. But the rate I want us to zero into is the 2.5%, which, um, which qualifies for the classes of assets I spoke about, cash, shares, stocks, all of that. And you, so you have some of 20%. So for example, if you discover a treasure chest at the, in your backyard, right? Instantly, Zakat of 20% is due on that. But then really, does that really happen? <laughs> then uh, you have Zakat on cattle, Zakat on um, harvest, and then you have the 2.5%. So let's look at the minimum NISAP, right? 85 grams of gold or 87 uh, grams. As that, uh, last week, it was 2 million 220 citing committee of Nigeria. You know, the committee that says, the moon has been cited, it's time for Ramadan, or oh, oh, today is Eid. You know, so they are the ones that um, this is based on, uh, just to make it, make sure that we are, you know, following the official <coughs> rates. And that's based on So if you are going to calculate 2.5% of that, it means that the minimum is 74 Naira. All right, we're going to, this is just an example. I'm not going to go into figures or anything like that. So basically, you look, if you have gold, like I said, gold or silver stored for wealth, you, you add that up. And your cash in hand, cash at bank, you add that up. Business stocks or shares, you add that. Money you have loaned. So now let me explain money, although there's a slide that discusses that. Money you have loaned, I'll leave that out for now when we get to that part. And then you, you remove money you have borrowed that is due. I'll explain that you know, when we get there. Money you have borrowed that is due. And I'm saying that because you might have a 10 year loan, for example, you cannot deduct that. It's only the, what is due at that time you're paying that you have to deduct. And then of course expenses, clothing, feeding, all, all of our rent, you deduct that. And then whatever your net figure is, you compute Zakat 2.5% on it. Okay, all right, so let, we have um, a few uh, common questions that we'll look at very quickly. So is interest earned zakatable? No, it is not. Remember I said that it is impermissible income, so you have to just give it away. So unfortunately, you can't just say, oh, I paid zakat, you have to dash it out, really. Then salaries, uh, uh, salaries, yes. So your savings on your salaries after one year right, is due on, is Abzakat is due on it. So, and, and the easiest thing really is to pick a day in the year that you'll be paying Zakat, or at least a month, not the day, sorry, a month that you'll be paying Zakat. And then every month of that year, you pay Zakat on it. So that, because to be computing on a monthly basis can become cumbersome and everything, or even, even your shares, everything, whatever you have at that um, point in time, you compute it and then you pay zakat on it. Then for debt, um, remember I mentioned that I was going to explain debt. For debt that is imminent, right? So you have two categories. You have the short-term and long-term debt. So debt that is short-term and is due, you can deduct it from your zakat payments. However, if you have a mortgage, for example, or a car loan that is five years or four years or something, it's only what is due that month that you deduct. Sorry, yeah, it's only what you have due that month that you deduct. But if you have a short-term loan that is payable, you know, that is imminent, they're already asking you, please pay up, you can deduct it. Then um, loans. For loans, there are also two categories. You have loans that you're giving out, right? And you're expecting them to pay you back. You deduct that, right? However, you may delay paying the card until you receive it, or you can pay it in advance. The earlier you pay, the better. So, or you, but you can delay it, right? And then you have a loan which you are giving out, but the person you loaned it to is bankrupt. You're not going to get it. So you can waive that. That's not going to happen. So just uh, skip that. Then, of course, personal and family consumption items are all exempt from Zakat. Homes, cars, riding animals, furniture, clothing, they're all exempt. 
and then inherited cash of funds. So um, if you have an inheritance, right, zakat is due after one year, right? But if you're not, if you, if you don't have access to it, then you really can't, because I mean, it might be a whole lot of money if you don't have access to it. How will you pay, you know, how, what cash will you use to pay, you know, on the zakat? So you, the zakat is not due on that. All right, so um, I would like us to also look at a few uh, things we need to be careful about when we are distributing zakat. So remember that we mentioned two categories, that's the needy and the poor. So that should always be at the back of our minds. So there's always a question of, can I give my relatives my zakat? In fact, it is encouraged that the people closest to you that qualify are the people that you should actually pay first if you can, so your relatives, of course. However, there are some categories of relatives that you can't pay zakat um, to because you're expected to care for them anyway. So like your wife, your children, your parents, your grandparents, your grandchildren, they can't receive your zakat, right? So, but I mean, your aunties, your uncle, your cousins, your brother, your sister can receive your zakat if they qualify as poor and needy or the other, I mean, if you're able to verify the other uh, stuff we spoke about. And then, so can you give your zakat to a mosque or an Islamic center? So now, even though these are religious, uh, it's for these are religious centers, zakat is meant for individuals. So you can't use your zakat to build a mosque. For example, your sadaka can do that, you know? You can't use your mosque to buy mats for the, for the mosque. Your sadaka can do that. Zakat is meant for individuals. So can you use your sadaka to, uh, sorry, your zakat to build hospitals and schools? Not necessarily. It's not meant for reconstruction, rehabilitation. No, you can't. Your, your sadaka can't do that. Zakat is meant for individuals, right? Although I did um, learn that there's some societies where this may be allowed, but not in ours from what I gather. So then needy or poor non-Muslims, you know, zakat is specifically meant for the Ummah, so they can't receive your zakat. However, they can receive your zakat. Like so anybody that can't receive your zakat that you still want to help, feel free to give them your sadaka. Pain abroad. You know, um, you go to YouTube and the Yemen uh, stuff comes up and, and all that, and you know, there's so many adverts you know, for them and all. However, the remember I spoke about what are the benefits to society? The fundamental, um, the fundamental um, objective is to foster goodwill in your ummah, right? So, I mean, if your relatives are not happy, the people around you are not happy, but you're sending your zakat elsewhere, it kind of defeats the purpose of it. However, if you have enough, why not, right? But I mean, really, you can send your, your sadaka abroad. From what I observed in our society, I think the sadaka we pay is much, 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 much more than the zakat we actually pay, right? If you saw the, calculat the calculation I made earlier, where is 55,000 on 2.2 million? I'm sure that person has given... <laughs> Triple that in a year in Saraka. Oh, Auntie, I need to pay my school fees. Auntie, I need to. I'm sure you've done that. You know, so Zakat, a Saraka moves along, but Zakat is ob obligatory, and you know you need to just follow the rules and, 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 and all of that. So, and then you have delaying till Ramadan. Okay, so everybody loves paying Zakat in Ramadan, and that's because you know whatever good you do in Ramadan is multiplied, you know, seven hundred times, and all that. However, what if your, okay, so for example, what if your zakat was due in December and then Ramadan is in April? Are you allowed to delay it? You're actually not. <laughs> You're not allowed to delay it, right? You have to pay your zakat in December and then you can pay your sadaka in, in, in Ramadan. But there's a way you can actually, you can actually, so for example, if your, 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 your zakat was due in December, you have to pay it. You can, what if you die? And you, didn't, you died without paying your zakat, your zakat rather. So you pay your zakat in December. 
when Ramadan comes, you can decide that, look, this wealth I have has not stayed for one year, but I want to pay zakat on it now in Ramadan. So what you're effectively doing is paying in advance. You're paying your, your zakat, because you've paid in December, you want to pay again in, in April. So you're paying in advance, that is allowed if you want to. And that way you can even try and change the dates of your, of your zakat. So you've paid in advance, then that means that by the next Ramadan, you can do the same thing again. You know, so that's a way for you to structure your zakat towards Ramadan without delaying what is already due. You know. All right. So I mean, I've come to almost to the end of uh, my presentation. So zakat of fitri is also something um, we should talk about. Although I'm sure everybody knows about this. So zakat of fitri is due at the end of Eid, right? I'm, I'm sure we all know about that. You know. And it's basically to, you know, to ensure that even the poor also sell it because everybody knows Ramadan was the month, the, the month the Quran was, uh, the, Quran, the Quran was revealed. You know, it's a, it's a time that um, where our save, our save being began, you know, in, in those terms. And so it's a, it's a beautiful month, month of blessings, month of mercy, month of forgiveness and all of that. And at the end of Eid, after 29 or 30 days of fast, we're like, yes, you know, we made it, we did it, all my objectives were met and all of that, so we're celebrating. And then as they're celebrating, the poor are just there mm -hmm, looking at you and all of that. So it's to, you know, to also let them enjoy, you know, Eid as well. So that's what Zakat is, uh, is, is is meant for. It's also meant to purify our fast. You know, so you, 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 even though, I mean, the first week of fast is really difficult because you're trying to modify some of the habits that you've had over the year. Of course, by the time Ramadan is over, a lot of us are usually holy. And then, but you know, you know how it is, and which is why Allah in his wisdom has made Ramadan once a year, you know, compulsory. So, I mean, you start out Ramadan like this, you're like that, and go down like that. By the time the next Ramadan comes, you go back up again. And that's, and that's how it is. So by, in the first uh, week of Ramadan, there might still be some, why did I say that? And, you know, all of that. And, and why did I do that? Before you now check yourself. And by the time week two comes, week three comes, you're, you're, you're all fine and all. So it helps to purify your fasts. And then the head of the family has the responsibility of paying for every member of the household. So if you, the head of the house, you have three in the house, you calculate, um, you know, what zakat is and pay for every member of the house. So, and, and it's about 2.25 kg. And then you pay on the, I would say you pay on the, um, on the food item that is popular, easy to get in your region, like the staple in your region. So if it's rice, it's rice, if it's millet, it's gary, you know, things like that. People usually do rice and all of that. So if you are four in a household, it means you'll be doing about nine kg of rice or so. And um, so you can take that to the mosque to, for them to distribute for you because you may not be able to, you might not be able to do that. People ask, oh, can you, can you do cash? Can you do cash um, zakat, zakat of fig tree? Um, it's not really encouraged, but I also learned that there's some societies, for example, you live in the UK, it's not like in Nigeria that people run to you in your car to come and be, you know, to ask for funds and things like that. You may not have that in more refined societies. So there they have, um, they have organizations that can collect the zakat for you and then use it to purchase what they can use to give out to, to the poor. And I've also learned that, well, if you give somebody rice, they don't have cooker to cook it. What, what's going to happen? So I guess it depends on um you know what happens but typically you take your rice drop it in the mosque they know they know the people that come to them they know the people that need it they'll distribute it for you and then also pay your zakat of fitri about two to three days before eat right and at the latest before the prayer right and all that so i think i've come to the end let me see this guy. Yes, so I've come to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Um, for if you want, uh, for FAQs on Zakat, right, we, we, if you go to our website, you'll find a, um, a page there which talks about Zakat, answers different questions. And then we also have a Zakat calculator. 
right, which is more detailed than what I just showed you over there. So you can put in your income and know what is accountable at the end of the of the of, of one year. So salam alaikum Thank you for listening, and I'm done. Okay. So thank you very much, Ma, for a very engaging and exciting okay. lecture. Um, so we have a few questions that have been coming into the chat box. So I'll just cycle through those for you. Um, so the first question we had is, Salam Alaikum, do you pay zakat on retirement savings? Okay. That's a very popular question. Um, well, according to my understanding, if the way you contribute is such a way that it doesn't come through your own hands. So for example, it passes straight, you don't even see it, you don't smell it, it goes straight to your retirement account. The understanding is that you don't pay the account on it. However, if the way you pay your, your pension is that it comes to your account and then you sweep it, which means you have access to it at some point, then you can pay the account on it. I have to say here, though, that zakat is one of the most um, how do, diverse topic. You have many schools of thought, you know, and I'm not a scholar. However, I would, I would discuss as I understand it, right, and I'm comfortable with. And I'll advise that people also review and then do what they are comfortable with. Okay, thank you. The next question was, um, please, did you cover who is eligible to pay zakat? If not, can you cover that? I live with my parents, but I fund most of my needs. So should I be paying zakat? Sorry, she lives with her parents, but... She funds most of her own needs. So should she be paying zakat? So she wants okay. to know who is eligible to pay zakat because she missed that section. Okay, so I can go back very quickly. So if your zakat, if your income, right, meets 2.2 million naira after one year, it's been sitting in your account for a year, then you're eligible to pay zakat. You're, it's, obliged, you're, it's become obligatory on you to pay zakat, right? So remember there's some things that I spoke about earlier, which is your nisab, then the timing, it has to have stayed before a year. So you must have had it sitting in your account for a year. Not necessarily in your account, it could be in shares, in stocks, you know, but it has to be savings on a year. And then remember what I spoke about the calculation. So by the time you deduct your due expenses, the um, expenses that are permissible and the balance is not up to the SAB, then you do not have to pay that part, right? So what you should do is go to a calculator, throw in all your income, deduct uh, your, uh, all the things we said to deduct, and then whatever the net balance is, if it's up to 2.2, then you pay zakat on it. If it's not, then you're exempt from paying zakat. Next um, question, please. What should one do if you intend to pay zakat and it was mistakenly paid for something that's not eligible for zakat? So for example, fundraising for a mosque, um, because maybe they heard that you could use that to pay the cash. So if they did do that, and it's now they discover it's ineligible. Ineligible, what do they do? It means they've given sadaka. <laughs> That's basically what it means. You've given sadaka, really. But I so I suggest you ask a scholar for that, for that, what you should do in retribution, right? Because you know, some might be lenient and say, well, your intention, you didn't know, and all of that. However, it might be nope. There are eight people. In categories that can pay zakat. If they didn't receive it, then you have just done sadaka. Please pay your zakat. You know. So. Salam alaikum. Thanks for the beautiful lecture. Can we pay zakat monthly, like a salary earner paying once we earn our salary, as one might not be able to calculate what has stayed for a year? Okay. So paying monthly can be cumbersome, right? But if you want to, you probably end up paying more, which is, I mean, may Allah bless you for that. However, it's not as difficult as you think, because like I said earlier, if you pick a day that you want to be paying zakat, then you just compute what you have in your position at that time. 
So you check your stocks, what's the value of a stock. You check your savings account, what's the value of a savings account. You check um, uh, if you have a gold, silver, that is for keeping, you know, people, sometimes people keep gold and silver so they can sell it when they are in need. If you have foreign currency, you know, and, and all of that, you calculate everything and you pay Zakat on, that, on, on it. Do you understand? Rather than going on a monthly basis. So it's not, it's not really that difficult to, uh, to compute. You don't have to, you know, it's not, it's actually not rocket science. Although some people make it out to be, I mean, I've read some texts and I'm like, oh, really, who, 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 who calculates all this? Which is why you, you have companies that have done, you know, Zakat calculators to make it easier, easier for you. And like I said, you can just go to, to check out our calculator, which is quite easy. And um, yes, so. I think the person also asked, what do we spend Zakat on? Which I'm think I'm sure there's a slide. What do we spend Zakat on? Okay. Zakat is for the needy, like I said. It's for the needy. They are using it to eat, to feed. Yeah, so it's for them. That's why we spend Zakat on. But Sadaka you can use for anything, like I said. So the needy use it to meet their basic needs. There's also, um, somebody wants to. So know. you don't spend zakat. You give zakat. You pay your zakat, and then, sorry. No, no, sorry. I didn't know you had finished. Um, oh, okay. No, what I was just saying was that. Question. Yeah, what I was just saying was that you pay your zakat, and then whoever you give it uses it for what they need to do: to eat, to buy clothes, to buy books, to pay for their education, whatever it is they need it for. They will use it for that. But you can't specify what they should use it for. Once you once you ascertain that they are needy and they are poor, so you give it to them, and then they, they should. Uh, use it. Somebody has asked if they can have access to the slide and the video. Yes, I'm sure we can make that. So if you join our mailing list, we can send we can send everything to you. Make it available. Okay. What I recommend is to go to the FAQs. Yes, also, please go to Lotus. Go to the FAQs. Yeah, that's what I recommend. All right, thank you. And for the video, yes, we'll send, if you check our YouTube page, we'll upload this, we'll upload this video um, for everybody to watch again. Um, okay. Then the next question, which you covered was how many types of zakats are there? And does paying zakats once a year cover all of them? And examples zakats will fit you. Okay, so um, Zakat with Fitri is actually tied to Ramadan. It's a Zakat you pay at the end of Ramadan. So it's tied to that period, so it's once a year, right? But Zakat can be paid, the normal Zakat, Zakat amount, that is paid any time in the year. It's just that people usually like to pay in Ramadan so that they can get the benefits. But the thing is that really, the poor need support all year round. Right, so I mean, if everybody is um, zakat now, what happens you know, in the other months of the year, right? And then it could be that the income you receive, right, is due for zakat much earlier than Ramadan. So you shouldn't delay paying it, right? So. Thank you. Um, Salam alaikum. If your income is related, is interest related, like you work for the bank or consult for the bank, can you pay zakat on that income? Okay, so that's a tricky one. The easiest answer is if you have like direct investments in treasury bills, uh, treasury bills, bonds that earn interest is very easy to identify, right? But if it's in, if you work in a bank, for example, uh, that's, that's a very tricky question. <laughs> that's a very, very tricky question. Um, I'm actually not even sure, you know, how to how to respond to that. It would have been easier if it was uh, maybe breweries and things like that. But for a bank, for a bank, a certain percentage of their income is not based on interest, right? So you have fees, commissions, all those those aren't interest based, right? But you have a certain. So for example, there was a time when I still had bank shares, right? And what I was advised was that okay, compute about sixty percent of that which is the income the uh, banks typically earn from interest, right? So 60% of that, calculate it, dash it out. I was like, what? So yes, dash it out. 
and then you can now you, you can now comfortably you know <laughs> You cannot comfortably, you know, use the rest, you know, as you want. So if I go through that analogy, that's what it's looking like, you know, if you want to be stringent. The thing though about banks is that we don't have like enough. So it's not like a, a society where you have so many Islamic banks and all of that. You have just three. So the question now is where will everybody else be working? You know, so, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to really go into that. I'll leave that for the scholars, you know, to, to discuss in, you know, in detail and all that. So I, I didn't, but what I know for sure is that you can actually purify your wealth. I, I can answer that hands down that if you have um, income from a bank, at least 60% of that is from interest. You have to purify you know, your wealth from that. Yes. Um, Salam alaikum. Do you pay zakat on owned jewelry, e.g., gold, for example, gold? Also, you say not to pay zakat abroad, but many in the U.S. might not have access to less privileged Muslims. Can that money be sent to Nigeria instead? Yes, they can. Remember, I said that there's some societies that you won't find any poor person. So, of course, you can now send it. So, remember that you first have to just um, satisfy the criteria first, the criteria where you are first. If, I mean, there's nothing you can do, then you can send it. But for example, it's encouraged that you give your relatives first and then the larger society. If you don't have any relative that qualifies, then of course you can give the, uh, the next person and the next person. And then if there's no one, of course, then you can send it abroad, right? What was the question before that though? Um, the question before that was about income and interest related. Oh, okay, um, no, if you, um, do you pay zakat on owned jewelry, e.g. gold? Okay, yes, yes, okay. So, so if the jewelry is what you wear, right, on a regular, as you wear your jewelry and all of that, um, it's not zakatable. However, if your jewelry is for, maybe you, you sell it or you keep it so that, oh, if I'm broke, I'll just sell, sell it and you know get some funds for it. You have to pay zakat on it. It means that you're keeping it as an investment. You're keeping it for wealth. Do you understand? So you have to pay zakat on that. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Salam alaikum. In paying zakat on our income, you had recommended to pick a particular month to pay zakat. Is this based on the Islamic or Gregorian calendar? If either calendar is permissible, which would you recommend? Okay, well, is um, the Islamic calendar is obviously the recommend, uh, what you recommend. You know that um, it goes up every 11 days, right? So if you use the Gregorian calendar, you have to adjust as well, right? So what you can do is just to pick, you can pick Shawal. Because I mean, many people don't really know the months, but everybody knows Shawal, which is after Ramadan. Everybody knows Shaban before Ramadan, you know? And what I mean, what you can actually do, you can actually research and say, okay, what, what are the months? Um, what, where, where, for example, what month was December? Was it Rajab as in, you know? So you can do that and then, you, call, you, you, you calculate your zakat from them. But remember that it's not just the month, it's about when you started receiving wealth, right? And remember that you have to calculate a year from that, right? So for example, you receive maybe something large in February, right? And you don't touch it, right? It means that by the next February, right? If it's still there and it meets me up, you have to pay zakat on it, right? So that's basically you know, what you're looking at. What you can then do is that in that February, you can say, well, what month is this in the Islamic calendar? You check what it is. And then a year later, you use you know, that same month to pay your zakat. So it's not just about choosing any day you like. It's about also when your wealth was received. Do you understand that? So um, when I was talking about choosing days was because you, some people want to push it to Ramadan. You know, so. Thank you, Ma. Um, You've covered this question before, but I think the person joined late. He says, still confusing on who should pay the cat. How do you how do, how do you know what has been saved for a year as we withdraw and save concurrently? That's not yeah, so, yes, but remember that you're saving and withdrawing for your use. So it's whatever is left of it. Whatever is left of it. It's just that you should be also be honest with yourself that if you know that the month for pay zakat is coming, you now quickly, I mean, who are you receiving? <laughs> Do you understand? But your, your normal life, you know, so that, that's for you. Um, 
Um, and again, for the person who asks who should pay their cards, I think there's a slide, you can just go to the FAQs on Lotus Capital website. But if you are above the floor, your income is above a certain amount, um, exactly, then um, you should pay their cards. She's, thank you, Mark. Um, is land zakatable if it is not income generating? Or is capital gains a capital when unrealized? No, it's not. No, it's not. So um, you have buildings that you people rent. So you pay zakat on the rent, right? If you have a building, you're going to flip. Zakat is due on that. Do you understand? So if you are trading with it, you have to pay zakat on it. If you're not trading with it, zakat is not due on it. If you are renting it, zakat is due on the rent. You know? So, yeah. So, for example, you yeah. might have a trading ground and people come and do their parties there. If they give you money you, and it stays with you, you pay the cut on it after year. Whatever you saved on. Yeah. Thank you. Um, they also ask, you've answered this already. Can you please clarify the difference between gold health for wealth and gold health for daily use? Uh, if you use it daily, you don't have to pay the cut. But if you know it's for wealth, then you're supposed to pay the cut for that. Um, so as a young Muslim with a monthly salary of 250k and I don't have savings for one year, do I need to pay the cat? Okay, so when were you employed? Note the day, right? So assume you were employed in January, right? So it means that by December, you have to calculate what you have saved from that money. That is what you pay the cat on. If it's up to Nisa. So if you're a good saver, who knows? If you're not, but chances are that you have, um, chances are you've not qualified yet because you have, um, you have your expenses. You have your daily expenses. It's not, Zakat is not meant to put you in penury either. There are wealthy people that can pay properly, you know? So it's not to put you in penury either. So. Um. Then another question, since the Zakat calculator is an error, do we convert other currencies based on official or market exchange rate? Which is a question just for Nigeria. Well, not just, but so. As in which exchange rate do you use? Yes, exactly. Um, I would say that you should use the exchange rate that you would get if you were going to sell it today, and that's going to be the Malam's rate. So if you're honest with yourself, you are going to sell it. How, which one, which rate, this CBN rate you use if you're going to sell it? You probably call one my lab and say, ah, I want to sell my FX or something. So. Assalamu alaikum. If one has not been paying their cats, do they have to calculate and pay their cats for previous years that they haven't been paid? Please do if you can. Because you owe it. It's like Salat. So if you can. Um, can you pay zakat on properties you are making installment payments on? E.g., the building costs ten million, but you paid four point five million so far. You don't pay zakat on your property, except like I mentioned, is it for resale, or are you living in it? If you are living in it, you don't have to pay zakat on it. Are you receiving rent from it? If you are receiving rent, you pay zakat on the rent, right? So. Yes, I think maybe if you've gotten a mortgage or something and you are, but you are using yeah. that, it's not, it's not your home. You are using that to make money, then whatever income. So exactly. So is the income you, yeah, you bought it from the building. Except the building is for resale. That's different. So it means that it's, it's like stock, stock for you. Okay. Uh, wonderful. I think that is, um, we have a hand up. I don't know if somebody wants to speak, but uh, if you could type a question in the chat box, if if your hand was up, because uh, you had something to say, please, if you could type the question in the chat box. All right. I'd like to say here, you know, that there are different organizations that you can pay your zakat to as well, including even Tahara. Tahara, do they also help you, you know, with uh, distributing your zakat. So you can, there's Zakat Zaraka Foundation, so many of them. So. Uh, I have read somewhere that diamonds are exempt for zakat. Why is this? <laughs> There's no why. It's because it was never mentioned. It was never mentioned. Remember that we're following the Sunnah, and they said gold and silver. So if you have 
um, rubies, you have diamonds, you have um, emeralds. Zakat is not due on that. Um, more questions are coming in. If one obtained a loan for a purpose, but the money was not used for a year, does one need to pay Zakat on the loan? Yeah, that's a typical, that's like hoarding. That's like hoarding, yes, if you pay Zakat. It means you did not use it for any economic activity and it's like a saving, you have to pay Zakat. It's discouraged. So, yes. Okay. Um, Okay, I mean, if anyone still has questions, we have about um, 10 more minutes. So if you still have questions, I'm sure she would still love to keep on answering your questions, but that's about it for now. Um, so I have a, me personally, um, I, I, does it depend on how easy it is to, in terms of when you made investments on stocks, when you have invest, stocks, investments, different kinds of investment vehicles, does it depend on how easy it is to liquidate that particular investment before you consider it for the cat. Because there are a lot of there are a lot of fintech apps now that are helping you invest your money, do this, but sometimes the money is locked, sometimes the money is not locked. So you know it, it can be a bit confusing when you're trying to factor those things in terms of your own investments. So is there like a typical rule of thumb that you can follow in these kinds of scenarios? Uh, not really. If you're if you're trading, your assets are trading assets, then 100 percent you have to pay a cat on them. Right, but chances are that I mean it's just two point five percent. It's not like you're paying the whole thing as a cap. Mm -hmm. Remember two point two million I mentioned. Two point two percent of that, two point two uh, two point five percent of that is fifty five thousand of the two of the two point two. Which is why I said Sadaka is much more, right? But so yeah, you you oh you have two point two million in savings. Your your zakat is just fifty five thousand. Do you understand? And then I've also read that for cryptocurrencies, you have to pay zakat on the full amount. Yes, for now. Yeah, sure. Super. Um, if you've had it for a year, don't forget that. Okay. If you had it for a year, yes. If you have an investment which is your only source of income from now, and you have to liquidate it to pull out funds to pay your zakat and reinvest again, what's the best way to manage that? So you, really, you really don't have, uh, but you, you probably don't have to liquidate everything. So for example, if it's shares that you're just talking about, you probably just sell a tiny one or two units if necessary. You don't have to liquidate the whole thing. If it's um, a mutual fund, you just sell a few units. Johnson, I don't, I don't think there will be, well, it depends on the kind of investment, right? But um, you have to find a way to pay it. Right. Or is there an example of what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, no, I can't see any examples. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm trying to see how you can't, there's, I don't think there's any, you can sell portions of most of your investments from what I think. Most of them, you can sell portions of them. You don't have to do the whole thing. And then just let this be the final question. Is Zakat applicable on Andrew? So I think Sorry, those I didn't get that. Are, is zakat applicable on ajo ajo i think it's the right oh ajo oh yeah, ajo yes ajo ajo is like a saving so if your ajo money has been there for a year of course you pay you pay zakat on it okay all right um, okay so i'll i think i'll close the questions there um again thank you so much ma we are very grateful for your wealth of knowledge your experience and obviously your time um i'm quite grateful you uh, you, you granted us a presence on this platform. Again, thank you to everybody that was uh, that was that tuned in. Um, we're really grateful. We have another session um, in about five minutes, um, so you know I think it's a different link. Um, so we'll be, hopefully we'll be able to um, gather you guys on there. So um, somebody has said that question was omitted. I'm going to see if I can quickly see what that question was. Oh, well, he's saying if diamonds are exempted, wouldn't people just suck up on diamonds instead of Zakat paying as assets to avoid or reduce Zakat liability? If diamonds are exempted, wouldn't people just stock up on diamonds instead of Zakat paying assets to avoid or reduce your Zakat liability? You know, that sentence alone 
<laughs> does that sound like um, someone? I mean, if you if that's your intention, Allah knows your intention. So that I mean, this is not tax evasion or tax avoidance we're talking about. This is about your your um, your religion, your spirituality, and trying to help the ummah. So if you say, ah, I don't want to help the ummah, let me go and buy diamonds. If that is your intention, I, I, I hope that's not the case, really. Yeah. Also, diamonds are really difficult to resell. Um, I think so. I don't think it's, it's not that straightforward. And then how many people do have access to diamonds? Then? Well, people exactly. do, but I mean, it's not a... <laughs> please, let's be careful with our intentions. Thank you so much. Somebody's asking what session. Oh, yes. So there's another session, Ramadan Reflection, which we will allow. Um, I believe you would, if you're in our, if you join the Tahara family group chat, we will post the link here. Um, I think you see the link to join that session as well. So again, I just want to thank you so much, Mark. Um, we are really, really grateful for, for, for your time again. And um, reminder to everybody, again, there's another session, um, Ramadan Reflection with Mr. Jubil Alao. Um, yeah, the information has just been posted right now, so you can join us over there for another um, one-hour session with Tahara Connecting. It's very, very beneficial, as beneficial as this, inshallah. So again, thank you very much, Mark. Um, and hope you have it was my pleasure. Day. Thank you. Ramadan Mubarak, everybody. And see you in a few minutes on the other side. Thank you. All right.